Hi, welcome to Community Talk. My name is Brandon Gilson and Joanna Motes. Uh, we're both from Youth and Family Services. Uh, hi, Joanna, how are you doing today? Good, Brandon, how are you? Not bad. Uh, Joanna's gonna talk to us about a great program for young people called Transitional Living at Youth and Family Services. So what, what is Transitional Living? Well, uh, we usually go with about just the term TLP, but Transitional Living Program is for 18 to 22 year olds that are homeless in, in the Enid area. Um, they could be at risk of being homeless or totally homeless. And we take them in and have a place for them to live and learn how to make it on their own. What kind of, what kind of things would learning on their own well, a lot of them, we teach a lot of independent living skills. Mm -hmm. We help all the kids find a job if they don't have a job, if they're lacking college or would like to go back to college, we'll help them get into college. Uh, we refer them to a lot of different places that they maybe have never been exposed to before that, that are here in our community that are available to them. So we just help them uh, learn how to live on their own, for maybe for the first time, and be successful. Oh, neat. Uh, who qualifies for this program? You, you said to, young people. But. Yeah, you have to be 18 to 22. Uh, by the 22nd birthday, we cut them off. So it has to, really by 18 to 21 year olds. Um, we get referrals from everywhere, from kids who just refer other kids to our program. Uh, we have agencies in town that refer kids, churches in town that refer to kids, schools. Uh, anybody that is 18 to 21 years of age that has been kicked out of their home, uh, has nowhere to live, is on the street, you know, couch surfing or whatever, we will take them in and help them. And we've got a lot of those. We have a lot, a lot of, those, of those. Just in Garfield County yes, alone. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, how would, uh, how does the program work? What are the nuts and bolts? Well, uh, we have three phases of our program. Mm -hmm. uh, we start the kids out on phase one. Uh, it's probably our most structured phase that we have. We have a four unit efficiency apartment that's very, very small and we put them up in that. Um, giving them, you know, we take them to Walmart, get all the things they need for their apartment, their groceries, their bedding, everything they could possibly need to set up an apartment. We do have TV and Netflix and uh, internet. Uh, and then we help them learn to live on their own for the first time. We have cameras on the premises that kind of watch the comings and goings. The strictest thing about phase one is that there's no visitors because we want to give the kids a chance to get settled on their own without any outside influences you know, stopping their progress. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, they're coming from situations where the kids have been, oh, having drug use with other friends or whatever. So we don't want that element of people coming in and stopping their progress in the program. In phase one, they're probably the most vulnerable. Most vulnerable. So we're, we provide a lot of case management for them at that time. We have a group that meets every Monday evening and we provide a meal and some type of topic that we're gonna help them to learn to build on. Um, they have to be, take random UAs in our program because we want drug and alcohol free kids because we have found that if they're not going to quit using, they cannot be successful. And so we, we, we really monitor them closely during this period. It sometimes lasts for a month up to three or four months on phase one. Um, and we check them out all the time. We do random room checks to make sure their, pro their mm -hmm. apartments are kept clean and nice. Um, once they show us that they have hand, can handle that part of the program, we move them to phase two. And at that point in time, they start paying $100 a month rent. Mm -hmm. and which is a lot cheaper which than you is, get anywhere else. Which is very nominal. And so they pay $100 a month rent. We pay for their utilities and everything they need. Um, but it's just to kind of give them a sampling of what it's going to be like when they're out on their own. They have to be paid by the first of every month, and we monitor that for them. At phase two, they can start having guests come over. So we give them a little bit more freedom and a taste of what that's going to be like. Um, sometimes if they're going to have problems, that's when we start seeing it is on phase two, when they let other outside people come in. Uh, and then finally, that program, that phase will usually last anywhere from two to three or four months also. Then we have phase three, which shows that the kids are ready to transition out on their own at that point. So we, they will continue to pay the $100 a month rent. They're still getting their random UAs. They're still going to our group. Um, we're still hands-on and doing lots of case management with them, but they're ready to find out what it's going to be like to be on their own. We will help them find a place to live. Uh, but the great part about our program is if they graduate from our program after phase three, and this can, they can be in our program anywhere from six months to a year and a half. But when they graduate, uh, if they're successful, they get to take all the money that they paid for their rent, goes back to them like a savings account. And then all the furniture that we provide in that f phase three apartment also goes with them to set up their own That's apartment. That's a, a real leg up. It is a huge step for those kids. So. 
Uh, Needless to say, the kids really want to try to graduate from TLP. Right. It seems like yeah. you leave a lot on the table if yes. you don't graduate. How yes. long did you say it lasted? You could last in the program up to a year and a half. It depends on your age. Like mm -hmm. I said, by the time you turn 22, you have to leave. Um, but we had kids that start out at 18 and leave at 19. Uh, it just depends on the kid and what their, what their needs are. Sometimes they can get through the program before a year is over. It uh, doesn't take them that long. Well, you've seen several kids graduate from the program. Yes, we have. Do you have any success stories you'd we like to talk about? We have a lot. We have a lot. One of our recent graduates, um, real proud of her. She came in here from another town, moved to Enid, had nowhere to live. Her family had kind of kicked her around a little bit. And she got with us, got a job, went to school a semester in college. Uh, and she has held the same job now for a year. She graduated from our program, took all of our furniture with her. We helped her get into a duplex here in town. Mm -hmm. And she's just thriving, doing great. And you know, we've had several other graduates who have moved on, some to Oklahoma City, different places, and they're all working, uh, holding down a job now and being a productive member of society. So we're real proud of those kids. But I do wanna say, we do have a lot of people who don't graduate, mm -hmm. and because maybe they're just not quite ready for the program, but the terrific part about TLP is that we plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. And so some, some of the things that we've taught these kids, I have kids come back a year or two later and contact me and thank me for what we have done, and they're just now ready to start living on so their own. So regardless of graduating, they're still taking some they, skills They remember, them. and they have they have made a better life because of it. So. That's awesome. Yeah, there's yeah. not too many programs like that around. No. We're Enid's very fortunate to have it. Um, how would someone go about getting a hold of you or figuring out, you know, how to apply for the program? Okay. Uh, we are located at Youth and Family Services at 605 West Oxford. Uh, my phone number is 580-233-7220. You can call anytime, uh, anytime that you would like to get hold of me. I'll schedule an interview for you to come in and talk about the program to see if it's a good fit for that person. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it. That's uh, Transitional Living. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to apply for the program, like she said, just call Youth and Family Services at 580-233-7220. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Trisha Mitchell, Executive Director with the 4R Kids Foundation, whose mission is to provide support to children and adults with disabilities. Please look for us on Community Talk. Hello, I'm Brenda Bingham with the Blue Star Mothers, and I have with me today Karen Volman, and we're going to share a few things with you, and we welcome you to Community Talk. How are you? I'm doing good, Brenda. Good. <laughs> good. Um, we've got our, our packing meeting coming up. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, we're doing our Thanksgiving uh, care packages tomorrow evening. Uh, of course, our office is there, our store is there at the mall between Dillard's and the Cookie Company, and it, our meetings always start at 6.30. And uh, we have about 55 boxes going out, and so if anybody wants to come out and help us, we'll be glad to have them. But we're trying to do our Thanksgiving goodies for our, our boxes this time because Thanksgiving is going to be here before we know it. That's right. And if we waited until closer to Thanksgiving, they wouldn't get their boxes in. Well, time. and so we have our meetings the fourth Thursday of the month, and that's Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. so we won't have yeah. a meeting on that day. Right. So we try to do homemade goodies. <clears throat> um, I know some of the ladies are making pumpkin bread, cookies, date balls, um, what? Uh, the Thanksgiving mix. Just, it, yeah. yeah, Thanksgiving mix. Uh, haystacks, just about anything to make it homey and Thanksgiving for them. So we want them to know that we're thinking about them even though they're not home. So, and then we have our meetings. Our meeting is the second Thursday of the month um, at 6.30 at the mall. And uh, it's coming t towards the year end. Uh, we're gonna be basically trying to get our Christmas boxes out after mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, and those all have to go out the first week in December, right. and, and our meeting time will change then also. Right. So November and December is kind of a messed up time for us, but, but we still get it done. But for the troops to receive their care packages in December in time for Christmas, we have to send them out like the first Saturday of December. And yeah. again, we do homemade goodies. Anything that we can send them that would make them feel like they're getting Christmas. 
from home, which again will be the homemade goodies. So if you or your organization would like to bake some items and help us out, or uh, Christmas cards, we always have a lot of Christmas cards to send. They love getting those, they yes. really do. Yes. They really love it. And then if you have like some CDs, DVDs, or anything um, that would help them to recognize the holidays. And we always try to do the Christmas stockings. Right. And with goodies in them. That's right. And the candy canes and stuff that's Christmassy, mm -hmm. you know. And we have been sending those, the uh, beanie hats, you know, yes. like the stocking hats. Yes. We have a lady that makes a lot of those for us, plus mm -hmm. a couple of our Blue Star Mothers make them too because they can wear those under their helmets right. when it's cold. Helps and in them. Afghanistan, it's usually cold right. in the winter. And a lot of our guys right now is in Ukraine. And that's And cold I too. understand <laughs> that's very cold too. So I'm sure they'll be looking forward to the beanie caps. And I just picked some up from a lady that does them. And so I think, I don't know if we have enough for this packing, but we'll probably go ahead and send them with their Thanksgiving packages. But, uh, now, most of our boxes are going to Ukraine at this mm -hmm. point in time. We have had a lot of uh, uh, deployments, you know, mm -hmm. going over, I think, what is it, next month? Well, they're, yes, they're in training right now at several bases. And they will be going, they'll be leaving the States in December. So, probably so the first of the, the year. Yeah that we will get the new names. But I do know that we will split the names up. But I do know just the National Guard themselves, there's uh, 300 and something. Was from it 350, the, I think? From the 179th, I believe. And 80 of them are from right here in town. And then, uh, then there was another deployment. From Vance Air Force Base. Yes, when but there's 60 of them. I think that's counting ours. Oh, is uh, it? But the ones from uh, from somewhere in Oklahoma City or in that area was uh, 500 troops. So we, have we a lot know of that, going. that we're going to get a lot of names shortly. We have to share with <clears throat> the other Blue Star chapters in Oklahoma to be able to get all the boxes mm -hmm. sent out. And, and the, you know, the Blue Star Mothers always step up to the plate. We've managed to do this every month exactly. since 2005. Exactly. And, you know, uh, sometimes we wonder where it's going to come from and how it's going to get done. But our community steps but up to the plate. They do. <laughs> um, just like we just had a fundraiser at Walmart helping us to bring items in to send to the troops. And, of course, Northwest Oklahoma and Enid, especially Enid, stepped up to the plate and helped us out a lot. So kudos to everyone who purchased something and helped us out with that. We're going to be having to have mm -hmm. another one because a couple of packings and we're out of stuff. You right, know? especially when we get the extra <laughs> names. And uh, But you know, not only the items that go in the packages, but the money to ship the packages. Yeah, the monetary donations mm -hmm. have been great for us too. Right. But it, when you do like over $1,100 in postage, you know, it doesn't take long. That's right. But it's so, all worth it. It's so all worth it. So <laughs> if you see us out doing fundraisers and stuff like that, please help us because that's what we're doing is we're raising money for postage. And if we run out of anything, we go purchase what we need. Just like today, uh, I'll be going to uh, Walmart probably, and they have the individual little pies for that we'll get to put in their care packages for Thanksgiving. And uh, the little harm roll dinners, that's the turkey yeah. and dressing. And, and if they are out and even at a port operating base or something and not at a where they can eat or anything, they can put those on their vehicle to warm them up. Even that's and right. To, you know, because they don't have mic a lot of microwaves over there, that's I'm sure. Right. But there is always a way to, to warm them up somehow. Exactly. And you know, it's not the best, it, you know. We'd much rather be able to give them a whole turkey and Thanksgiving dinner. But, you know, we send what we can to make their day. And at least they know that, that they're thought of. Right. So, so we'll be doing that. And then we've got some other things we've been doing. We just stay busy all the time. <laughs> yeah, we've been working on the Veterans Parade that's going to be November the 11th. Yes. And we hope everybody shows up for that and mm -hmm. honors our veterans. 
It will be November the 11th. The parade starts mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock, and if you're going to be in it, the lineup starts at 9 over there by right. the Q spot. Right. And if for some reason you haven't been notified about the parade, we ask you to fill out an entry form. It says that, it, that you have to have $10 to uh, be in the parade, but you don't. We will waive that fee. Um, we, uh, we really just would like to have a big turnout for our uh, veterans and let them know that uh, we care about them. They're very important to us and what they have done and what they have sacrificed for us. And you know, uh, it took a lot of us having our sons and daughters serve for us to realize what importance it was. It is. And so put your coat on. If you don't want to be in the parade, put your coat on if it's cold. Uh, a stocking hat and gloves and come in and clap for our veterans as they're going around the square. Exactly. And fill out that application form, not because we need to know uh, anything other than who you are and what you stand for. If you're a if you're a church group and you're you're in the parade, we want to know that you belong to this church, and that you support that you support the troops by being in the parade. Right. Or if you're a we you have if, an old car mm -hmm. or or a motorcycle or whatever yeah. you want to do for the parade, a float or a bicycle. If you're in a group of bicycles, or you just you want know, to walk in it, yeah, you know, just let us know. Or if say, for instance, that you was with the Shriners. Well, we want to be able to say to the people that's watching the parade, this is the Shriners and this is what they do and they've been helping children for many years. Well, this is what we want to be able to tell our audience as we are going around in the parade. That's true. So. That's true. We hope to see you all there because it would mean so much to our veterans. And I know, like you said, if you have children, I have two children that are veterans, yeah. but my dad was a veteran too with <coughs> World War II. And uh, and at Walmart, we met a little World War II veteran that had never been recognized. And right. we're hoping he'll be able to be with our World War II veterans in the old car that's mm -hmm. going to be in it. Yes, so, so come out and uh, help us to show their love. You know, I, I would hope to see as many out for this as we did the Cherokee Strip Parade. That was wonderful. That would be awesome. That was a wonderful and how many people came out. That's right. But you may have to put your coat on or a heavy yes. sweater or something. But it's uh, Saturday you know, morning. It's just a, yeah, it's a Saturday morning, November the 11th. And even if it's cold, just remember our veterans go through a lot more than standing out there and honoring them for, uh, for about an hour or exactly, so. Exactly, exactly. And just to add to that, uh, after the parade, then we will be going out to Woodring Wall of Honor because they're going to dedicate the educational center. And so if you'd like to see that or be a part of that, come out and join no, us. I think they're starting and that at one o'clock. Yes. They're also going to read some names, the names of our fallen exactly. from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, then at seven o'clock, I believe, is a concert being put on at the Moose, and that's for veterans too and their families. Uh, you don't have to be a veteran to go, but I believe there is a six or a ten dollar charge to go to that. But you know, it's supposed to be fun, and you know, it's all about veterans on Veterans Day. Right. So. So it'll be a full day of things going on for our veterans, and uh, you know, it's it's. I talked to a little guy when I went out to the, uh, the sheriff's department there for the emergency uh, and uh, to leave some posters and stuff. And I don't know, he was in there about something and he had on his BDUs and all this. And he said, oh, I want to be in the parade even if I have to walk. Uh huh. He said, I want to be in the veterans parade, you know. And that's awesome. he was really, yeah, he was really cute. That's really awesome. And you know, we want all of y'all to be in it. We want to recognize everyone. We've got uh, some of our uh, politicians is going to mm -hmm. be in it. Of course, of course, our World War II veterans. Right. And if someone hasn't contacted you, please, my phone number is on the on here. Call us. We want you in that parade. This is all about you. So we would like for you to be there. So if you need a ride, if you need help, if you want to ride on a float, 
we'll find a float for you. Yeah, our Blue Star Mothers will <clears> be <throat> having a float there. And last year we had a World War II veteran ride on our float. Yes. But any of you all that <clears throat> served. Exactly. We'll find a place for you to be in a car, on a float, or somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. So with all of this in mind, just remember that we're doing this for our troops and our past and present. So, and we're running a little low on time here. So I would like to take a few minutes to say thank you. Thank you to all of Enid, Northwest Oklahoma, anyone that supports our troops, no matter if it's a dollar or if it's hundreds of dollars. We appreciate everything that y'all do for us. And we sure appreciate our troops. We do, we do. Land of the free and home of the brave. Exactly. And that's because we have our freedom. That's right. It's from, from <clears throat> first to now, you know? Exactly. And you know, if it wasn't for our troops and our sons and daughters, we would have no clue what's going on. But you know, once you put your son or daughter in this position, you find out real fast what all of this is about, what our freedom's about. So we would like to say thank you for all that you do. And we also want to give a shout out to our Gold Star families. We would like for you to be in our parade too. We want to honor your soldiers, your sons, your daughters, whoever. Um, they gave the biggest sacrifice of all and we would like to recognize them. We don't ever want to forget. So if you can, give me a call. Or me. If or Karen, whoever. Uh, you can always find us at the mall on Thursdays and Fridays from 10 to 5. You can always find my phone number. It's all over town. Karen's is all over town. <laughs> and uh, if you need, you just need to talk, we'll be there to talk right because you know what we've been there and we know that we need to listen sometimes we may want to cry if you want to call me in the middle of the night i don't care that's right i'll <laughs> answer my phone so thank you so much and i, I would, just want to say god bless america and let's pray for our country that's right and we all need the prayers so until the next time thank you Enid Television for allowing us to come on here and share our stories. Thank you to everyone that uh, steps up to the plate for us. And remember, when you see us out, we're doing it for our sons and daughters. Have a blessed day. Hi, I'm Matt Lohman, CEO of Hope Outreach Ministries, where our mission statement is sharing the love of Jesus Christ to the felt needs of our community for the purpose of empowering people towards responsible living. Where we have our parenting ministry, our homeless ministry, our community care ministry, our transitional housing ministry, and our thrift store ministry, which helps everyone in our community who is in need. Please look for us on Community Talk. We're looking forward to telling you more about each of those ministries. Leighton, a board member with the Enid SPCA, and I have here with me Kayla Waldroff. She is the uh, marketing and customer service representative for the Enid SPCA, and we are here to talk about our upcoming 18th Angle Wine and Food Festival. It's our major fundraiser that we have every year, and just also talk a little bit more about our um, organization and for those of you that are not familiar stands for the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and so Kayla let's just start off talking about the Wine and Food Festival um, go ahead and tell us what the date and time and location of this year's event okay um, this year's event we're excited to say is November 4th um, it is at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center, and it is from 7 to 9.30 with wine tasting 7 to 9 o'clock. Um, we really are excited about this year's event. We have, I think, more vendors participating this year than ever before, so we're really excited. Great. And if somebody's um, interested in an attending event, what kind of things can they expect? So there, there are some activities there, like a free photo booth, um, lots of wine tasting, 
Um, some of the vendors bring different types of spirits and beers, so there's lots of different opportunities to try new things. Um, we have a lot of food vendors coming, um, more this year than ever before, um, so you can try lots of different food from all over Enid. Um, we're really excited about how much participation we have from our supporters this year. Great. And um, I think we have the same um, music entertainment coming back this year. Yes, we have live entertainment from the bill collectors this year, and they're always wonderful. Great. And I think something else that's new this year is our wine glasses. Yes. Um, so this year, every attendee will be getting a wine glass to take home with them. Um, we have for our uh, sponsors, we we have certain glasses um, that have stemmed, colored stemmed glasses for different sponsors. Um, but if you come as an attendee, you will also get a glass. It just won't have the colored stem. And um, are you still accepting sponsorships? Absolutely. You can um, get a sponsorship on our website, enidspca.org slash wine festival. And you can look at the different levels of sponsorship there. Um, there's four different levels of, of sponsorship. And that also includes invitations to the wine festival. Um, the wine festival is an invitation only event. So you do have to have your invitations beforehand. They're not available at the door. So a sponsorship includes invitations to the event and um, your, of course, your wine glass and the uh, platinum sponsorship is our largest sponsorship that also includes a table. Great. And if somebody wants to go ahead and obtain a special invitation to the event, where can they go ahead and do that? Sure. Um, we've tried to make it easy to make the invitations available on our website, enidspca.org slash wine festival. You can also get them at the Enid SPCA, uh, the Cat Clinic, and visit Enid. Great. Now, why don't you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about the Enid SPCA and what it does for the community. Sure. So the Enid SPCA is a nonprofit. Um, we, our mission is to end adoptable pet euthanasia in, due to overpopulation here in Enid. So uh, our mission is to save as many lives as we can. Um, we do have adoptions at the Enid SPCA, cats and dogs mainly, um, and we do um, lots of outreach programs for the community. Uh, right now we have two special programs. We have a program for anybody that lives in 73701. They can get a cat spayed or neutered for $10. So that's a really good um, value um, because we really need to get as many spayed and neutered as we can so we can get a handle on the pet overpopulation problem that we have. Um, and that is thanks to PetSmart Charities. Um, they have given us a grant to be able to do that. Um, and the second program we have is the SNP program, and that is for um, anyone who makes a total household income of less than 40000 a year. They could get a dog spayed or neutered for $40 or a cat spayed or neutered for 30 and I understand that uh, the SPCA is um, in the process of applying for a, the, I believe, the fifth grant um, to continue the spay and neuter program for the impact. Yes. Um, we really hope to know by December whether we will get that grant or not. Um, and our hopes is to widen that um, customer base so that we can help more people spay or neuter their dogs and cats. Um, PetSmart Charities is really good to us and they have um, granted us every time um, in the past five years. So we're really looking forward to and hoping that they will grant this next grant cycle. That would be wonderful. Now, I understand that the SPCA recently has received a cargo van. That's exciting news. Tell me about that. Yes, yeah, so we recently were given a cargo van from Pope Distributing. Um, they donated the van to us and it has really helped expand the reach of the SPCA. I just can't even say how much. Um, we actually have coined the van, the rescue wagon, um, and it helps us get animals out of um, situations where they may be euthanized or otherwise not cared for and get them out to other rescues. So we were able to create a program around the rescue wagon um, that is strictly based on getting the animals out of situations where they may be euthanized and two safe shelters and it may not even be our shelter but if we can get them exported exported out and transported out to other shelters who can take them um, that van has just been instrumental to us being able to do that and to create that rescue wagon program um, oftentimes shelters will take a pet if um, it has vaccines on board they will look at that pet as a more desirable pet to pull from a at-risk situation and so if we can go maybe pull that pet from animal control, 
get its vaccinations and then get it to another shelter that's able to take it, that's one more life saved. Um, because we are a no-kill shelter, when we are full, we are full. When our shelter is full, we cannot take in any more pets. So we had to find a way so that we could save more pets and Rescue Wagon is allowing us to do that. That is so exciting. And thank you, uh, Pope Distributing for absolutely uh, that donation. That's wonderful. Now, I know at the SPCA, um, there are uh, pet grooming services. Is that correct? Uh, available to the public? Yes, we have a groomer there on site, uh, Susan. She is wonderful. She is uh, there in our uh, West Building. And if you need a pet groom, she does a great job. Um, just give her a call. Her phone number is 580-402-7777. Um, she's just wonderful to work with. And it's great because a portion of her proceeds are donated right back to the SPCA to support our mission. Great. Now, if somebody is interested in becoming a volunteer or, or just getting involved with the Enid SPCA, what kind of things can they do? How do they go about doing that? Sure. So there's several ways to get involved. Um, simple ways to get involved without even doing much is helping us spread the word through social media. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, Instagram, help us by sharing that information um, because that makes a huge difference. Since we have really ramped up our social media, we have been able to reach so many more people and in doing that, saving more, more pets' lives. So that's an easy way to help and get involved. If you would like to volunteer, we have volunteers that help us with everything. Um, we have volunteers who specifically come in and help us with our medical side. We have volunteers who come in and help walk the dogs and train the dogs or socialize cats so if you're just a cat person that's fine you can come in and you can play with cats all day and we <laughs> love that the cats love that they need that so we can find something for everybody to do uh, more information about volunteering can be found on our website enidspca.org um, and then you can sign up to volunteer on that on our website and then you come to a quick orientation which is held the second Tuesday and Thursday of every month um, at 530 at the shelter and I know we have many um, off-site events that we're always looking for volunteers to help out with as well. Absolutely, yes. We have um, PetSmart is so gracious to allow us to come do adopt adoption events at their um, store. And so we always need volunteers to help us with that. And we do lots of different outreach um, throughout the year that we need volunteers for. Great. Now, you know, the most important aspect of the SPCA is the pet adoption. If I'm interested in adopting a pet, how do I go about doing that? We've tried to make it very easy to um, adopt one of our adoptable pets. Um, so you can browse the adoptable pets on our website, enidspca.org, um, or come in and we'll be happy to show you the pets. Um, adoption fees for all of our pets is $85, which is a huge value because those pets come spayed and neutered, microchipped, up to date on vaccines. They are a happy, healthy pet when they leave and come to your home. We want to make that as good as experience as we can for you. Wonderful. Now, um, I think we also have foster homes that people can get involved with? Absolutely, or? that's another great way to get involved. Um, fostering is a huge, huge benefit to shelters. Um, oftentimes we're looking for fosters who can help us with maybe um, kittens who are orphaned and need bottle fed or maybe a dog who has a little bit of behavior issues and we need to get that pet out of the stressful shelter and into a home so that it can be rehomable. Um, so we are always looking for foster homes. Um, fostering is great because we provide all the food, all the bedding, all the toys, anything that you can imagine. We're going to provide for that. You just provide in your foster your home, um, the shelter, the love, and the care. Right. And I also, I believe you can foster to adopt. Is that correct? Absolutely. So that's kind of a new concept for us. Um, we will, if, if somebody is interested in adopting a pet and it's not quite ready to go home with them yet, meaning it's not spayed and neutered and we can't officially adopt it out yet, we can allow the customer or the potential adopter to foster to adopt. So they would become the temporary foster home for that animal until we were able to get it spayed and neutered or any other medical that needs to be done. And at that time, then we could finalize the adoption. Wonderful, great. Well, I know that the Enid SPCA is not associated with any national organization. Um, so how does one go about um, if we want to donate items or if we want to uh, make a money donation, how do we go about doing that? Sure, so that's right. We do not receive any funding from any government, state, um, city uh, funding whatsoever. Your tax dollars do not go to fund us. We rely on donations from our community and we live in an amazing community who have supported us for the last 19 mm -hmm. years. Um, you can donate supplies. We often 
um, reuse used pet supplies. Um, we use blankets, towels, um, pretty much anything you can imagine. We will find a use for it, and we will we will do that. Monetary donations. We've tried to make it really easy to donate on our website, EnidSPCA.org. Um, you can choose to give a one-time gift, or you can choose to do a monthly gift that would automatically draft out of your account. So it's easy peasy. Great, and I think. Um, Individuals can also go to like Amazon and we have a list there. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. things to donate? Yes, we have an Amazon wish list. So if you're an Amazon shopper, you can go to Amazon.com, look up the Enid Society for the Prevention of uh, Cruelty to Animals, and we have a wish list there. Um, also, you can shop. Anytime you shop on Amazon, shop on smile.amazon.com, and you would be able to choose your charity of cho choice. And anytime you make a purchase, they are going to donate a um, por portion of your purchase back to the SPCA. So choose the Enid Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and they will automatically donate to us for your purchases on Amazon. Wow, that's wonderful because if you're going to buy something anyway, you might as well make a little donation back to the Enid SPCA. Um, well, why don't we just wrap it up and um, again, tell us when and where is this year's uh, 18th Annual Wine and Food Festival. So yes, the Wine Festival is November 4th um, from 7 to 9.30 at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center. Um, again, invitations are not available at the door. You must get those in advance. You can get them online at enidspca.org slash wine festival, um, the CAT Clinic, and Enid SPCA. Um, they're $35 uh, minimum donation to come, and everybody who comes is going to get a wine glass. So you get to take that home with you. It is a fantastic, fun night. Um, so please, please come and join us. Exciting. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to learn more about the Enid SPCA and how it um, helps the community and also to thank the Enid uh, Television Network for allowing us to come on and, and talk about our wonderful organization that we have here. And we hope everyone just comes out uh, to the 18th Annual Wine and Food Festival and just enjoy the music and the fun and, and the food and, and just have a blast. Thank you. Hi, this is Carmen Ball. I'm the Executive Director at Hedges Regional Speech and Hearing Center. We've been on East Randolph for over 50 years, and if you have any questions about hearing or speech for yourself or someone in, our, in your family, please give us a phone call. Watch for us on Community Talk. Take care.